John Burke. <laughs> so, uh, so we're very invested in the community here and its continual growth and success. Just one year ago, we completed a network expansion in John Burke. We now deliver services to the element at Viridian where our Xfinity community platform is in place, as well as the Top Gulf with more projects on the way. Connectivity and advanced technology attract long-term investment and bring quality jobs to further strengthen Schomburg's economy. Another way we're committed to contributing to the local business community is through Comcast Rise, a program inspired by how deeply COVID-19 has impacted small diverse owned businesses in communities throughout the region. RISE stands for representation, investment, strength, and empowerment. This spring, we awarded 100 Chicago and Cook County BIPOC owned small businesses that will receive $10,000 grants from the Comcast RISE Investment Fund. We know business owners and residents need to be connected now more than ever. And we're committed to supporting that need because it helps our communities thrive and increases the quality of life for all its residents. So thank you Schaumburg Business Association for hosting educational events like this. I wanna thank our village, county and state officials in attendance here, especially Matt Frank and our speakers today for their continuous support for the business community during these trying times and look forward to working with all of you as we transition back to our offices. So thanks again, Lisa, for this opportunity, and I'll pass it back for you for the panel discussion. Thank you, Sean. Much appreciated. Appreciate everything you do for Schaumburg and the area and for the Schaumburg Business Association. Thank you. Um, and then we have our supporting sponsors for today. Harper College, we are going to hear from Dr. Granger in just a little bit. Uh, Top Golf, which on the way out today, you will... Um, have a little surprise waiting for each of you. And uh, all the village of Schaumburg, thank you. Um, but now moving on to today's panel, uh, just to kind of give you an overview, we'll be hearing from each of these three panelists in a presentation. Any questions you may have, please hold them until the end. Virtual attendees, any questions you may have, feel free to put it in the chat box. Um, at the end of the presentation, you are also included in the discussion and the Q&A aspect of today's event. So I want to um, give a little overview of each of the panelists really quickly before we jump in. Jonathan McGee, as the Deputy Director of Regional Economic Development for the Illinois Department of Economic Development, develops the strategy for regional economic development, business recruitment, local investments, and partnerships. Most importantly, his team of 15 represents the state to these communities, such as Schaumburg, to bring programs, dollars and new ideas to their economies to grow and attract business and jobs. We'll hear from Sochelle Florals, who is the Bureau Chief of Economic Development for Cook County. She's responsible for leading the work of the Bureau, collaborating with the seven counties of Northeastern Illinois and the City of Chicago to develop and implement initiatives to grow the regional economy. And Matt Frank, the Economic Development Director for the Village of Schaumburg. Schaumburg, if you didn't know, is the largest center of economic development in the state of Illinois, outside of the city of Chicago. In addition to the nine and a half million square feet of retail and restaurant space, the village has over 12 million square feet of office space and 13 and a half million square feet of industrial space. So with that, I will go ahead and Jonathan, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for inviting me to be here today. Again, good morning. My name is Jonathan McGee, Deputy Director of Regional Economic Development here at the Illinois Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. I'm so, so excited to be here with you all today to talk about the economic development tools that we have here at DCEO and ways that these tools and programs and resources can support your businesses, communities, and workers. Next slide. So I just wanted to give you an overview. Uh, the way that we uh, provide support to the business community here in the state of Illinois is through uh, three major ways. Uh, that's grants, that's loans, and tax incentives. Uh, and most recently, due to the onset of COVID-19, 
we have recently been, been providing frontline economic relief assistance to small businesses, which if many of you saw uh, the whirlwind of activity in the Illinois legislature, there's some good news coming uh, on behalf of the small business community, as we know uh, a lot of businesses are still reeling from COVID. Next slide. So one of our primary tools, and again, uh, this is a pretty long slide deck, so I'll just make sure I go through quickly, is our EDGE tax credit. And I wanted to talk about this tax credit because a lot of the times folks are interested in it, especially when they're hearing about projects and businesses that are looking to locate here in Illinois. But wanted to talk about essentially what I call the three-legged stool, so to speak, that's important to think about when you're assessing whether EDGE is the right fit. Uh, for uh, a company that's looking to grow or expand in Schaumburg, right, or any other part of the state. And that's number one, uh, investment, that's job creation, and out-of-state options. And so really quick, when you're thinking about the EDGE tax credit, you really want to, when you're talking to a potential prospect, ask them a couple questions initially. What's your worldwide headcount? How much are you planning to invest? And what other out-of-state options are you looking at? The importance of asking this question is key because a lot of the times we want companies to understand uh, that this can be a resource for them, but only if they're eligible. The 10 year tax credit uh, based on income withholdings and depending on where you are in the state, uh, that potentially could get uh, uh, increased to 75% if you're in an underserved area, which is based on census tract. But long story short, if you're creating, uh, if, if you uh, have a 10% worldwide headcount that is under 50 jobs, uh, or if you, are creating, uh, if you have a larger global worldwide headcount and essentially, uh, you know, that's larger than uh, that 10%, then of course you have to create a minimum of 50 jobs and 2.5 million in investment. But wanted to talk about this great tax incentive and resource uh, because a lot of the times we wanna ensure uh, that folks know what's aware of them, especially as we try to remain competitive uh, with neighboring states and states across the country. Next slide. So again, uh, I talked about a little bit, a little bit of this earlier, but uh, as you all know, um, again, this could be a huge resource for companies, especially companies that are creating jobs here in the state. And so uh, again, you know, we have something else that we call the but for clause, which is very important to talk about too when you're thinking about the edge tax credit, which is most importantly that uh, companies cannot commit to coming to Illinois before they're approved for this tax credit. So the thing to think about here is that the first people uh, that businesses should be talking to, especially if they're considering out-of-state options, making the minimal amount of investment in job creation is the state of Illinois. And so I would encourage all of you all, as you're getting projects and hearing about projects, please send them to myself or our team. Uh, we walk through the application with companies. We help them uh, you know, work through the application. And essentially, before we pass it off to our business development team, ensure that we provide that due diligence in advance so that companies can stay on their timeline and we can still ensure that they get the white glove treatment and customer service that they need. Next slide. Uh, another valuable resource for companies that are looking to grow and expand here in Illinois is our Enterprise Zone Program. Uh, actually, we actually increased this number. We have 102 Enterprise Zones across the state, and these provide both local and state benefits. Uh, specifically, the Enterprise Zone Program provides a uh, sales tax exemption for building materials, which depending on the amount of investment can be significant. Uh, two, it also helps provide, we expanded our MM&E credit. So for manufacturing, uh, that's manufacturing of machinery and equipment sales tax exemptions that are eligible through the state program. And then are also in our investment tax credit and utility tax credits, uh, depending on if they have the amount of job creation. So next slide here, which will show you a little bit more about the Enterprise Zone Program benefit. So again, you know, local communities also provide a variety of incentives. So the Enterprise Zone pro uh, Program combined with the EDGE tax credit, a lot of the times provide a powerful economic package for businesses. Um, and even if EDGE is not a program on the table for businesses that are growing, uh, the Enterprise Zone a lot of the times can help fill some of those gaps. So again, we have Enterprise Zone administrators across the state of Illinois, uh, and it's important to work through them, uh, as well as working with us to ensure this is the benefit that uh, a potential project can take advantage of. Next slide. Uh, again, when we see large projects, a lot of times folks are interested in our high impact business program. Again, you have to uh, you know, have a business that is making a minimal amount of investment 
and uh, a large amount of job creation. Uh, this project, a lot, these projects a lot of times take a lot of time uh, because there's a lot of things we need to assess. But again, uh, if you know of large projects, if you know of folks that, you know, are going to meet some of these designations and numbers, this is something that they should actually look into. Um, and again, through our Enterprise Zone program, a variety of these programs and benefits really, again, uh, provide excellent resources for businesses to continue to grow and businesses that are growing currently. Next slide. Uh, another program I want to talk about. So we talked about tax incentives. Another program is our Advantage Illinois Loan Program. And most recently through the American Rescue Plan, uh, we saw that the SSBCI funds, which helped establish this original loan program, has been re-upped for states. And so we're thinking about how do we make this program more creative? How do we provide more access to capital and startup funds for businesses uh, that are looking to grow, especially minority-owned businesses and businesses that um, really need that startup capital? Uh, the Advantage Illinois Loan Program, we work with lenders across the state, uh, and it's important that we actually have more lenders that we're enrolling in the program. So uh, it can be twofold, whether you know of a bank that wants to become a participating lender or you know of a company that is in need of access capital, uh, access capital then this may be a program fit for them. Uh, again, you know, we want to ensure that businesses don't have to uh, struggle to get the capital that they need to grow. Uh, because we have these partnerships with the bank, we will work with businesses uh, in lock and step with them to ensure that they understand the process of the programs. And a lot of the times that is helpful for businesses than going into a bank themselves and trying to find those loans. Next slide. And then, of course, we are committed to equity here at the Department of Commerce and Economic Opportunity. Our fund for the advancement for minority enterprises uh, is focused on minority owned businesses, women owned businesses. Uh, folks with disabilities and veteran-owned businesses. And this is important because we know uh, that businesses that are color, businesses that are in underserved area have been disproportionately impacted just by policy. And so again, you know, we know that a lot of uh, businesses as well struggle with that capacity building. They struggle with that access to capital. And so again, this program is dedicated exclusively for uh, minority-owned enterprises. And again, uh, we will work with businesses, our team here at DCEO to ensure that they understand what are all the steps in the process they need to potentially take advantage of this? Next slide. Uh, again, another large program that we rolled out was our data center investment program. And again, we know uh, data centers are growing. Uh, we've had uh, many data center announcements over the last couple of years, and we're continuing to see interest here. Uh, when you talk about a place like Schomburg, you know, and you talk about all the real estate uh, and space that you all have access to, this could be a real reality. Uh, for, uh, you know, data centers in this area. So again, you know, when you're thinking about the suite of tools, when you're thinking about the type of companies that you're talking to, we want you to have this menu of options uh, that you can put together and we'll work with you to put together incentive packages because again, our goal again is to increase economic opportunity uh, regionally across the state and that's working with uh, local partners and our public-private partners to ensure that that's the case. Next slide. Mm -hmm. Next, oh, awesome. Uh, one thing I want to talk about too, and, and this is critical. Uh, everyone knows that we've been struggling with workforce. Uh, you know, workforce development has been a significant challenge, not just here in the state of Illinois, but across the nation. And again, you know, our goal is how do we provide and support and provide long-term solutions, right, uh, for workforce challenges. Uh, sometimes companies are like, I need to fill the jobs now, Jonathan. Well, you know, apprenticeships are probably uh, the best long-term solution that you could develop because number one, we know uh, that uh, there are young uh, high school kids and community college kids who are interested in these roles in either manufacturing or distribution or transportation. And so what this does is provide a tax credit for uh, companies that are for paying for those educational expenses and establishing apprenticeship programs that will allow them to cultivate a pipeline for the future. Uh, and again, you know, we also have our local workforce agencies that can help you craft uh, programs that um, are key and especially continue to be key as uh, jobs become more technical, uh, skills become more challenging for folks to obtain. And so I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about this resource because we are seeing more applications, but we want to see more. Uh, and we want, we need partners like you helping to encourage companies uh, to take advantage of this resource. Next slide. Um, R&D, 
is another uh, tax credit that Governor Pritzker uh, signed into law and extended uh, based on the federal tax credit, R&D tax credit. Um, again, we know uh, that research life sciences are all uh, ramping up in industries that are growing, uh, especially as we see uh, the new challenges with COVID. And so again, um, when you're thinking about companies that, you know, you're trying to incentivize, you know, it's important that you all are aware that, you know, it's not just uh, just our edge tax credit, our enterprise zone, or, or our apprenticeship tax credit, but we also um, are, are incentivizing businesses that are in this space. And that's one of the first questions I always ask folks is, you know, are you doing R&D if you're in the science and life sciences space? So again, I uh, wanted to talk a little bit about that. Next slide. Um, this is an important one, and I want to stop here because, uh, you know, earlier in the year, uh, we were fearful uh, that this tax incentive uh, would not be continued, uh, but actually this was retained uh, in the General Assembly, and we'll be launching this program uh, later this year. Uh, the Blue Collar Jobs Act is a way to incentivize, uh, you know, construction uh, workers, right, that are going to be hired for these projects. And again, when you're talking about adding value on top of edge tax credits and enterprise zones and local benefits, this is yet another opportunity for us to stimulate, uh, you know, the economy in our areas through incentivizing businesses that are growing very rapidly, um, that uh, are investing a lot in construction and growing and expanding. So did want to share that good news with you all this morning as well. Next slide. Again, one resource that I think sometimes folks don't think about, but is a very important one, is our Small Business Development Centers. These are funded uh, in part by the SBA. Uh, we have over 42 centers. We expanded seven centers last year. Um, and again, these were primary resources, not just for helping startup businesses and helping them with business plans and marketing, uh, but they helped with COVID-19 relief. And as we prepare to deploy uh, additional federal stimulus dollars, our CDCs are critical partners. Um, and, you know, I'll talk about all of the frontline resources that you all have, but we have a toll-free helpline that any business can call. We have our First Stop Business Innovate Information Center, which, again, is a one-stop shop for folks that have inquiries and questions for DCEO, and that's just one of our frontline bureaus. Uh, I'll talk about mine and others uh, moving forward. Next slide. Uh, again, we know uh, COVID showed us that it was tough for businesses uh, to generate revenue, right? Um, and one way that businesses can retain uh, more revenue uh, is by contracting with government. Uh, we work very closely with CMS to help folks get BEP certified with the state. Uh, this is a tremendous opportunity for businesses that are providing critical services that the state needs. Uh, when COVID-19 hit, we had a lot of manufacturers that retooled their lives to provide PPE, and a lot of them were BEP certified. Uh, we were the first state most recently uh, to announce hub zones, uh, our new designated hub zones, our PTAC, our resources that provide white glove treatment and customer service for businesses that are looking to bid, businesses that are looking to get certified, and businesses that are looking to do uh, government contracting. And we also expanded these centers last year as well. Uh, and again, wanted to ensure that you all were aware. Next slide. Uh, again, startup capital is important for us. Um, and we want to ensure that businesses have that access to capital. And we know venture capital and uh, angel investors has become very much buzzwords these days. But we wanted to ensure that we are innovating and thinking about how we're leveraging all the capital here in Illinois. Um, and so, again, our angel tax incentive program is a way for us to incentivize angel investors for investing in minority-owned businesses, which we have set aside for. But in addition to that, investing in businesses that show promise to start up and grow here in Illinois. We want to continue to cultivate uh, our innovation and entrepreneurship and ingenuity, not just in Chicago, but across the state of Illinois. So uh, another program yet that I wanted to share with you all uh, that you could be aware of. Next slide. So my team, uh, I wanted to talk about the Bureau for Regional Economic Development and our, our Office for Minority Economic Empowerment. So I talked about our small business development centers. I talked about our P tax. Now, both of these teams uh, are regional economic development uh, professionals who can support you in business attraction, support you in workforce development, and support local units of government when they're aiming for infrastructure dollars. We know uh, EDA, uh, as well as the state, you know, has released uh, infrastructure dollars over the last year. And so my team is on the ground in the community, working across the state uh, with communities to think about 
what resources can they provide or what resources can we bring to you to help stimulate uh, your regional economy, right? We know in order to attract businesses, we got to invest in infrastructure. We know that we can't attract businesses if we're not cultivating workforce. And so, again, wanted to spend some time to share with you all, all of the folks that are committed every day uh, to serving communities, businesses, and workers. Uh, and then our Office of Minority Economic Empowerment exclusively focuses on minority-owned enterprises and businesses. And a lot of the times they're providing that direct technical assistance and uh, service. So, again, uh, our teams this year recently implemented Salesforce and government, which, you know, is a big deal for us. Uh, it allows for us to track data. It allows for us to take your contact information and make sure that you're getting information from us. So uh, as we continue to innovate and get out of uh, COVID-19 and, and recover, you know, our team will be critical to driving projects in the region. Next slide. So again, just wanted to show a quick slide about how we work with communities, what we provide. One thing I did want to raise is site selection. We work with a public-private partner called Intersect Illinois, who helps us provide sites, market sites, as well as conduct research. And they'll do that on behalf of communities, uh, as well as they help out at state with that as well. And so when you're thinking about telling a company why Illinois, or a company why they should stay here, a lot of times Intersect provides a lot of that marketing and research support. Um, and we're always happy to facilitate that conversation and communication. Next slide. Uh, again, I already touched on this, but you know how our team works for minority-owned businesses, uh, helping you all understand uh, those programs, but providing that global uh, world-class customer service is key for us. And that's something that I have doubled down on. Our team is always happy to meet with you. We're always ready to support you in whatever your endeavors are. And, uh, that's what I believe makes our team here at DCEO unique, is that we have folks that are committed exclusively uh, to working with you all. Next slide. So uh, if you all were watching the legislature, uh, we saw that uh, we will be receiving uh, $300 million in back to business grants, with 40% going to disproportionately impact communities and minority communities. We are working feverishly uh, to get this program up and running. Um, because we know uh, the big program, a lot of businesses did not get support. A lot of businesses are still reeling from COVID, and some businesses never received any support. And so our goal is how do we prioritize businesses that have not received anything? How do we ensure that we provide an equity lens? And want to share that good news with you all, and more to come once we develop that program. Next slide. Uh, one of the most popular NOFOs that have been out most recently is our Community Navigator Program. Uh, this was a program that was recognized by the Biden administration. It was launched in DCEO in fall of 2020. And our community navigators were exclusively focused for helping small businesses get the technical assistance that they need, the customer service and support that they need, and provided that outreach so that businesses can get the big grant program and get PPP and get IDLE, right, and uh, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund. And so we're doubling down on that. Um, we're going to offer grants. Uh, next slide. We're going to offer grants of up to 10 a uh, million for potentially 15 uh, hubs. And again, these hubs will be in your community working with businesses so that we can make sure that folks don't get left out all across the state. These will be uh, community organizations that are working with folks around to ensure uh, that again, these funds that are meant for uh, the businesses that need them the most uh, to receive them. That deadline is tomorrow uh, for folks that we're not aware. And um, we have been excited about the interest we've received about this program. Next slide. I just wanted to talk a little bit about trade and investment. So a lot of folks don't know that DCEO has an office of trade and investment. Um, again, what we saw with COVID-19 was a lot of businesses had to get creative. They had to get an online presence. They had to think about how do I find ways to cultivate and generate more revenue? One way to do that is through exporting uh, and international promotion and providing support to businesses that are thinking about exporting uh, their products. And so our OTI, our Office for Trade and Investment, not only has offices around the world, but we also are here at DCEO to help businesses think about doing that. Uh, next slide. Again, like I said before, we have a global headquarters and network. So when you think about foreign direct investment uh, in your region, uh, our Office for Trade and Investment can do a lot of that back channeling, do a lot of that communication uh, in other countries so that we can provide uh, the best possible customer service and win projects. A lot of the times when they're visiting the states, uh, right now this week, it's going on Select USA 
uh, you know, the governor is, is, is having a fireside chat with a company that we recruited here uh, from France, uh, one of the largest insect seed protein companies. That was a collaborative effort between our OCR office, my office, and business development. So again, as you all are thinking about just creative ways to drive more economic development, also for trade as an investment is, is an opportunity. Next slide. So again, I uh, just wanted to show you kind of how uh, we provide that customized export assistance. Um, we're doing trade shows, we're doing uh, virtual missions right now. Our hope is that we can get back out uh, to different uh, countries and invite more countries back here to the States. But again, thought this would be a great visual for you all to see. Uh, next slide. Our ISTEP program, we provide uh, grants for businesses that are thinking about exporting. So we know, again, uh, this costs money. So how can we provide small businesses with capital uh, and funding to ensure that they can start to export their products? So not only are we providing that customer service, that technical assistance and that customized uh, support, but we're also helping to provide funding um, to help businesses think about how to do this. And uh, the next slide will show you just some of the results um, that we've had um, as a result of these programs. So again, uh, as you can see, um, this is kind of uh, an overview of how We've leveraged our ISTEP program and how the funds uh, get distributed. Uh, but if you turn to the next slide, you'll see again uh, just some of the stats and statistics on what we've done with our ISTEP program, assisting over a thousand companies, uh, you know, helping companies see more ROI. 35% of our clients are small and disadvantaged businesses that we know need these resources the most. Uh, and again, uh, just over 12% new to export and over 40% new to market. So again, OTI is a tremendous resource. All the bureaus here at DCEO are committed to ensuring that we think about full circle and 360 degrees, the business incentives and programs and grants and loans that can help you grow your economy, help get folks back to work, and help continue to keep your region thriving. Next slide. So again, if folks have follow-up questions for me, hope that wasn't too long. Uh, my information is here. Uh, I've shared this PowerPoint. Uh, with the Schomburg Business Association and appreciate being invited today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. We'll make sure that everybody has his contact information as well. So, Chiel, you are next if you'd like to take the stage. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me? We hear yes. You. Great. Thank you. Thank you for um, inviting me to join you this morning. Uh, my name is Soshi Flores and I am the Bureau Chief of the Cook County Bureau of Economic Development. Um, great presentation, Jonathan. I look forward to continuing to partner with you to get these needed resources out to businesses. I want to thank um, the Chamber Business, Business Association for hosting us this morning. They truly have been a great partner to Cook County over the last year in particular and have been such a strong anchor in the village of Schaumburg, providing tons of technical assistance, hosting webinars, and helping business owners navigate the, the variety of relief programs that have become available. I realize that um, this can be overwhelming at times, so it's great to have a strong anchor that you can rely on, that you can go to, that will help you navigate through these resources. Thank you, um, Lisa, and, and your team for your tireless commitment to the business community in Schaumburg, and I look forward to continuing to partner with you. Um, today, it, um, no, they're two different. You've got your um, your sick personal, okay. which is one week allowance. And you have your vacation, which is a two week allowance. But the reason I was just asking. Can you hear that? Good morning. Sorry, today I'm, I'm going to be joined by two of my team members, um, Irene Sher and Mohamed Alahi. I'm sure many of you have already met them, but they're going to dive into the programs that we have established, that we have had, and also have established this past year as we pivot, as we listen to our businesses, and as we have been fielding so many calls from from several manufacturers and small businesses asking us to be nimble, to be creative, um, and, and really partner with the business community in developing programs that can best assi assist you navigate through these turbulent times. 
I encourage you to reach out to us, to reach out to our team and use them as a resource, but also use their robust network of business service organizations also as um, a resource. Because our resources focus on business retention and expansion. Um, we work very closely with DCO, other municipal municipalities and different business organizations that are very niche, but that provide um, specialized programs that can assist you. Businesses really come to us for discreet assistance in relations to your needs. Um, and our bureau really acts as a concierge that um, we, we coordinate, we work very closely with our businesses to help them navigate, whether it's through site selection, property tax incentives, talent recruitment and retention. These are just a few of the resources that we have. But um, as I said, we're nimble. We're here to work very closely with our strong business service organizations and continue to evolve the programs that we have available to assist you through these times. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Irene to talk in particular about our small business assistance programs. And we also have Muhammad Elahi that will talk about our financial tools and incentives. So Irene, I'll hand it over to you. Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, I wanna echo Soshi's uh, appreciation for, for the opportunity to, to share some of our work with the businesses and membership of the Schomburg Business Association. So Sochi just mentioned, and, and this is an overall view of what we do. We, we want you as businesses to understand we're here to help you and support you to navigate your way through, um, through government, which is not always easy. And basically we provide support in terms of business counseling. If you're interested in doing business with Cook County, if there are infrastructure investments uh, near your property that, that need a improvement, let us know and we will see what we can do, either through the county or connecting with the state or other resources. We offer some property tax incentives, which um, Mohammed will talk about. We have a few key sectors that we focused on, particularly manufacturing, transportation, distribution, and logistics. And we also assist with site selection, increasing focus on sustainability, the green economy. And uh, we also recognize and try to work with businesses to find the right talent solutions. So next slide. Oh. Part of the slide is missing. Um, <laughs> but anyway, this, uh, yeah, Let, let's just go to the next slide. We could go, yeah. So during COVID, we know, um, and I'm sure all of you know, it, it uh, hit businesses who are ready for everything um, like a ton of bricks and created an environment that no one had ever experienced. We understand that businesses needed assistance in a lot of different ways. We uh, knew they needed cash, direct financial assistance. Many of them couldn't take on more debt. So we developed what we called the Small Business Assistance Program that included $10,000 grants. We also knew businesses needed advising and we coupled uh, TA assistance, business advising assistance with our grants. And we also had the option for businesses that only wanted the advising to sign up for that. And we offered a series of webinars with our partners um, and some of them directly ourselves on a range of topics. And through this program, we assisted or are still assisting close to 3,700 businesses. We are particularly proud that we've been able to reach um, some of the hardest hit communities and particularly that over 60% of our grant recipients and technical assistance providers were businesses owned by people of color. And we did this not by ourselves, but with a tremendous network. And we could go to the next slide. 
Um, so this is an image, this, this slide shows all of our partners in our network of, of 35. And we, we created this network. We didn't know about the term community navigator or the DCO's program of hubs and spokes, but essentially that is what we had. So the organizations that are highlighted in green represent the organizations that uh, provided the deepest level of service um, and had the most capacity and helped process all the grant applications. But all of the groups listed here were part of our network and provided value in promoting and supporting businesses and referring them into our system. We had a central platform where businesses could sign up for services and we were able to track and monitor the progress of each business's assistance. We are, this, this group that's on the screen is from 2020. We are in the midst of reviewing applications for 2021 and are also applying to the DCEO Community Navigator program tomorrow. <laughs> So we, we hope to continue and expand in this work. Next slide. So another uh, point that, that Jonathan made was just this idea of talent solutions for businesses. Cook County is a DCEO apprenticeship navigator for Northeastern Illinois for all 10 counties. So we have, uh, a person who really serves as a, a concierge to help businesses understand what's involved in apprenticeship, how it can help recruit, retrain, and attract employees. We also know that there are a lot of models out there for assisting businesses find solutions to their talent needs. And this image here happens to be a visit to a, actually a DuPage business, Wittenstein, which uh, really pioneered the German American Chamber of Commerce apprenticeship program. So um, we do a lot in that area. And if you have talent needs, feel free to reach out to us. We can connect you to the Chicago Cook Workforce Partnership, as well as other um, workforce providers. Next slide, please. Another thing we did during COVID was we partnered with IMAC, the Illinois Manufacturing Excellence Center, and literally reached out to 1,000 manufacturers in suburban Cook County. Um, and, and what we found, and the reason we reached out was we wanted to know how COVID was impacting their business and what were their most urgent needs. And we have a report we'll be happy to share with you, but a few of the findings are that in Cook County, and this is probably true for the rest of the state, that manufacturing remains an important economic engine, but it's driven by small manufacturers. That is <laughs> manufacturers with 20 employees or less. These are tend to be family owned, small companies. They represent diverse sectors like fabricated metal, machinery, food manufacturing. Um, one of the other things we noticed that the most distinguishing factor in their needs was tied to size as opposed to their sector or geography. So the businesses or manufacturers in Schomburg, Elk Grove Village face the same challenges as those in Harvey or Chicago Heights. And, um, and it didn't matter whether they were in food manufacturing or um, fasteners. And so we are working with these findings to develop programs to address their needs over the coming year. And next slide. And I'm gonna turn it over to Mohammed as we transition into some of our other work. Good morning. Um, this is Mohammed Elahi. I'm with the Bureau of Economic Development, uh, Department of Planning and Development uh, in uh, Cook County. Uh, I'm apologies for the slides being a little bit um, uh, not uh, queued the right way. But anyway, this is one of the program that we have. Uh, uh, Matt uh, from Schomburg and I work very closely in many, many projects in Schomburg. This one is in Franklin Park. We have a, a HUD 108 uh, loan program. 
uh, below market interest rate loan program that we were able to, this is just an example of what we have done in one of the projects. Uh, in Franklin Park, this is a industrial park uh, that we funded this project in 2016, uh, which has, uh, you know, work, we work with Franklin Park, uh, partnered with them financially to, uh, to upgrade uh, the roads and the connectors to the, uh, the nine businesses that there were uh, and uh, creating a better infrastructure for the business to conduct their business. And it created uh, about uh, <clears throat> 133 jobs and helped them retain uh, all, almost 13, 35 uh, jobs in their companies. It was a $3 million investment from the Cook County side, uh, but the total project cost was $6.5 million. And like I said, we were able to partner with uh, Franklin Park uh, through this uh, program. Next. Uh, one thing I wanted to report, we have a property tax incentive program for commercial and industrial businesses in Cook County, and which uh, um, reduces the property tax uh, obligations uh, for these companies have when they're doing some economic development projects, whether they're purchasing a new building or going into a greenfield and creating a new uh, or constructing a new building or even getting into an existing uh, property and bringing their businesses. Um, and this, you know, this property tax incentive class six deals with industrial, uh, class seven uh, deals with commercial properties and class eight uh, deals with both commercial and industrial. Um, some of them are renewable. Uh, usually the terms are somewhere between five to 12 years uh, of incentive, uh, which is essentially the reduction in the property taxes. Uh, however, uh, a couple of them are renewable, depending on if the municipalities are agreeable with the renewal of those uh, reductions. Uh, in uh, just wanted to give you a snapshot of uh, last three years, 2018 to 2020, uh, what we have done in uh, Commissioner uh, Kevin Morrison's district. Um, there were 44 incentives that was done, and there was a total investment of 100 and, almost 168 million dollars. Uh, where uh, <clears throat> about 1,500 jobs were retained and over 3,000 jobs were created. Um, next slide, please. The, one of the newest uh, program that we have is Commercial Property as a Clean Energy Program. Uh, this is a approximately 10-year program nationally. However, the state of Illinois enacted this uh, law um, only a couple of years ago, and Cook County was able to uh, create uh, and launch the program uh, February of uh, this year, February 18 of this year. What it does basically in a very simplest nutshell that, uh, you know, think of it as a, you know, um, a second, uh, you know, uh, second lien mortgages um, on your commercial property that you can make improvements. Only difference is the improvements in the clean energy program, the CPACE program, Improvements has to be um, energy efficiency, renewable and water conservation type of uh, improvements. And the repayment of these loans are tagged to your uh, property tax bill. Um, hence, uh, basically the, the, the terms can be very, very long, um, 20 to 30 years. We have even, even seen nationally 35 years term. This uh, program, uh, Capital is provided by the private uh, capital providers. There are many uh, PACE lenders uh, that exist today nationally, and they have their operations in, in Chicagoland area recently. Um, and uh, it, the beauty of it is it, it provides 100% of the eligible costs to be financed through this uh, financing. Um, and there is no personal guarantee, corporate guarantee, nothing is needed. Uh, you know, the, the, the loan stays with the property, even as a business owner, let's say you are uh, doing these uh, improvements and but uh, you need to move in five years or so to a different building because you're expanding. This loan stays with the building. It does not accelerate. So um, I would dare to say that it is almost, it's a, like an off-balance sheet debt to the company. 
um, just because the repayments are, are paid through a property tax bill. There's no special assessment, nothing. It's just a line item of you know, one line item in the uh, property tax bill uh, as if you're paying a, you know, a regular loan. Um, very, very um, uh, innovative way of financing. And one thing I like to say that why is it such that it stays with the property? Uh, you know, think of think of it. Uh, you know, if you are doing a solar roof, you know, in your company uh, in a building. Um, obviously, if you're selling the building, you're not taking the roof away. Uh, just like you don't take your doors and windows away. Uh, one of the you know, there are many many ways you can make your building energy efficient. Uh, one of the biggest ones are um, you know, uh, windows and doors, uh, energy efficient windows and doors, or better HVAC system. LED lights all over building envelope uh, and also in the renewable side you can you know look at solar obviously and some we have seen wind smaller wind projects uh, wind uh, uh, one wind turbine goes into a building uh, outside of the building obviously um, and uh, you know the, the there is another one called uh, geothermal uh, a lot of larger buildings are taking advantage of geothermal energy to heat heating, cooling, and hot water type of uh, purposes. And um, that obviously, um, I can say almost it's like a free heating, cooling, and um, hot water that you, you, uh, that you get uh, with a very, very minimal uh, expenses in the heat pumps and every, uh, maintenance of the heat pumps and all that. Um, obviously, um, this goes with uh, President Breckwinkle's goal of bringing down greenhouse gases in the county. Um, and like I said, we started this program uh, a couple of months ago. We're already seeing a lot of interest uh, that coming in. Next, please. And uh, I will now hand it over to Irene, uh, associate. Thank you, Mohammed. Well, and thank you again to Lisa and her team for inviting us to join you today. Um, I just want to stress that the Bureau of Economic Development is here to continue working with businesses to listen from you. And um, the Schomburg Business Association is your conduit to us. They have been great partners. Um, as Irene mentioned early on, our business service organization network is robust, um, but we're constantly evolving it as we see and we hear from businesses about their unique needs during these times. So please feel free to reach out to us. Um, our contact inf information is provided in this deck and I know that it will be distributed to everyone. So thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sochil. And Irene and Mohammed, great to see you guys. And lastly, we have Matt Frank from the Village of Shopper. Thanks, Lisa. Uh, next slide. So I'm going to drill into what's going on in Shopper, how things have changed, and talk about projects and where we stand in the different uh, sectors. Probably the hottest market, I'm sure, Dave, Rich, and others in the housing industry is the residential market. Um, so if you own a home like Kitty and I do in Schaumburg, uh, it's going for a pretty steep price and it's not on the market very long. So I asked Royal Hardware to provide a couple tables uh, showcasing kind of where things stand. Um, so you got think Schaumburg, 33,000 housing units, two thirds of those are multifamily. So a lot of townhomes, condos, apartments, duplexes, quads, all that type of stuff. We have 150 homes on the market right now in Schaumburg out of 33,000 and they're going fast. Um, you can see the average market time, we're down to about 25 days for a home on the market. So uh, obviously a great place to work. We have a fantastic park district. We've got great schools. We've got great amenities that helps Schaumburg elevate itself and be a, a quality of life destination. So on that top uh, uh, right is DR Horton. So if you've driven by Algonquin Road, you've seen those uh, row homes. Uh, those are going for 370 and up. They've already sold 26. They have another six under contract. Five are available right now. Um, they can't build them quick enough. It's the, the challenge. Obviously, we know some of the labor supply and material issues, uh, but that'll be a great addition, uh, bringing new folks to the area. And then in the bottom right is a custom home development uh, adjacent to the Park District facility on Thacker. 
Uh, this is the cut through that I take between Conant and Target. So if you ever drive Thacker, you know where that is. So we're looking at uh, set eight new custom homes. I'm sure those go for well over half a million dollars. Next slide. Uh, a couple other statistics for you. Uh, sales price, you know, uh, with all this new development, you know, those are going high, but still, Schaumburg, two thirds of our units are multifamily. So we're still around 225,000 for our average sale. So uh, plenty of options and affordability for our community. Uh, so it attracts all folks. And then showings per listing, I asked Royal to go back all the way to pre uh, uh, Great Recession, so 2008. So you can see back in the day, you know, there are four or so uh, visits for each listing. Today, we're over 15. So uh, that reinforces the demand. Uh, and probably the biggest development we'll have going on is the Nidia development. So you see on the bottom of the slide, a couple elevations of what those homes will look like. Uh, that's 149 homes built uh, uh, between Summit and Plum Grove, south of Weathersfield Way. Uh, that'll be a four-year build-out, uh, very nice subdivision, probably the largest subdivision in the last uh, 10 years in Schaumburg. So uh, that was the District 211 property. Uh, they didn't need to build the high schools. So they went out to the market and sold it to a Nidia development. So if you're looking to come to Schaumburg, there's plenty of options. So next slide. So how do we compare to where we were last year in the pandemic? And, you know, fantastic year we had in 2019. Um, obviously things have changed dramatically. Uh, back in 2019, we had nearly a million square feet of new development or renovation uh, valued at just uh, over $30 million. Uh, today, uh, we're about a third of that, you know, 333,000 of square feet that are being renovated or built. Uh, this is year to date, so January to May, and we're looking at uh, roughly somewhere around $20 million invested. So that's going to change dramatically. We have uh, some significant uh, projects coming. So a new Carvana dealership, we've got a Priya Living, we've got some major projects that will help boost that square footage and value. Next slide. So we talked about office. This was my biggest concern um, and it has been. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we had vacancy of about 20%. So that's something that uh, we've been trying to strive to uh, work with our partners like the county and state of attracting to fill in some of these folks. So it was nice to see people walking in uh, to an office. Uh, right now in Chicagoland, you've got about one in four workers who are actually coming into the office. Uh, nationally, that's about one in three. So we're lagging a little bit there, uh, but there are decent signs of activity. Um, so and talking to my office broker friends, uh, activity has definitely picked up. There's a lot of tours, people are evaluating what the right size is for the future. Um, you know, we're fortunate we've been able to secure a couple decent tenants. Uh, so Costco uh, Wholesale Logistics is bringing 200 brand new jobs to this market. Uh, they're going in on Martingale Woodfield Preserve. And then also in this building, Road Ranger is relocating its headquarters from Rockford. So they're bringing 50 employees to the Schaumburg market. Uh, they'll be opening up in the next two months uh, within this facility. Uh, the top right is a proposed development uh, at uh, 90 North, uh, that's Med Properties. Uh, so they're looking to uh, break around on that first uh, tower uh, later this year. And then we've also had RF Ideas and Mitsubishi Elevate Charmer. So uh, we continue to be an attractive place. You know, the challenge is just making sure we're the right size, the right price, and all those things that go into real estate. Keep moving. Retail. Uh, obviously, Schaumburg's known for retail. Uh, Woodfield is here. They'll be celebrating their 50th anniversary. Uh, so we're excited. Uh, and uh, it's great to hear from them that traffic is up and they continue to attract new stores like Dr. Martin, the Buff Sack, and so forth. So they continue to be the main draw. Uh, and we were able to celebrate some recent ribbon cuttings. So happy to do that with the SBA. Uh, top left is our second dispensary in Schaumburg. Uh, in Great start. We'll have our third dispensary uh, out west at Schaumburg and Barrington Road. Um, also, a couple of ribbon cuttings. Uh, Streets of Woodfield uh, captured a new tenant, Selfie World, uh, in the former Joseph A. Bank space. So uh, they're off to a great start. They're very active in the SBA, great members. So if you haven't been there, reach out to them, check it out. Uh, and then our restaurants. Um, you know, we, we've have 250 or so restaurants and uh, continue to get interest. So we were able to celebrate Egg Mania. So they are located uh, at Salem and Gulf. Um, so they're off to a great start. Those who love cookies, if you're willing to stay in line, go to Crumble. Uh, Lisa and I had lunch with the owner and it was amazing. He had to hire 80, 80 people just to keep up with uh, the demand. Um, so it, it, it's amazing. It's the first within Illinois. Um, so obviously they're very hot. Um, so they'll be looking to open a couple other locations. And then Rocket Fizz is in the mall. And then uh, 
Schaumburg does not have a Popeyes. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to believe. Uh, but uh, they'll be opening shortly up on Algonquin Road with the whole chicken sandwich war. So if you have a, a taste for that, you'll be able to get that in Schaumburg. Next slide. Uh, so hospitality, Heather, thank you for uh, supplying some of this information. Uh, they've also been hit very hard, obviously, during the pandemic, and our hotels have suffered immensely with, you know, occupancy is less than 20% sometimes. Uh, the good news is it's slowly recovering. Uh, we're starting to see some of our best occupancy uh, rates, which uh, is shown here as it's slowly uh, recovering. Uh, obviously, the first back is leisure. So those of you who've been putting up weddings and some of these family reunion events, that's coming back strong, as well as the sports tournaments, those type of things. A um, couple of years, hopefully we'll get that business uh, traveler back and we'll get those sales meetings uh, filling up our 30 hotel rooms here. So other than the team at Meet Chicago Northwest, we'll continue to do a great job and we'll continue to work on that important travel industry uh, that impacts Schaumburg. Uh, speaking of travel, uh, I want to showcase uh, your hotels need to be creative. Uh, so I, on Golf Road, just across from Woodfield, is exploring how to do a mixed use development there. They're looking at adding 28,000 square feet of banquet space and uh, roughly 200 uh, apartments in the back. So this would really invigorate that area by Roosevelt University and create that live work play environment uh, where they would share the amenities between the hotel and the apartment complex. So first equity group is uh, to explore that uh, uh, development. Uh, we think it's a little different for us. Uh, so we brought this concept to the board. You know, generally we try to keep residential out of the Woodfield area, but you know, as times change, people looking for that live work play, we need to be a little more open to that. And uh, we think this might be an interesting way to kick that off. Uh, industrial, probably our second hottest market. Uh, we talked to you know, Mohan and uh, Jonathan about helping our manufacturers. Uh, so we work very closely with the county. Uh, we do uh, the class six, uh, which is been able to entice several companies. So on the right, uh, top right is US waterproofing. They came back to Schaumburg. They were in Rolling Meadows for a temp stay until they uh, outgrew their space. We were able to uh, lure them back in. Uh, they invested three and a half million dollars into this property, I think one Remington brought nearly 200 jobs. Uh, so it's a fantastic job on that stock and team over there uh, to bring that company. Uh, then the other two, Taltrans and Key Tower, uh, recently got six Bs. Uh, Key Tower is telecommunications, the um, cellular wireless communications. They are bringing about 50 employees from Chicago to uh, Schaumburg. And then Taltrans is actually moving out of DuPage into Cook County. So it's a nice win for us. Uh, we'd like to be able to get uh, folks from outside Cook County to come into Schaumburg. And uh, they're bringing in 10. They're a logistics company. So speaking of logistics, on the left is some elevations of Xperia. This is the $50 million project uh, down at uh, Rodenburg and Irving Park. Uh, so this is a campus that would be trucking office uh, fuel station and so forth. Uh, so we're working through some of the environmental issues through IEPA and MWRD now. Uh, we hope to have that project break ground. That'll bring over 200 employees to the Schaumburg market with convenient access to I-390 and uh, uh, should be a great success story for us. And I will talk a little bit about 90 North. So this is the former Motorola campus area and the, the properties by the uh, convention center. Um, so this is a snapshot of uh, what could be. Uh, we've been working very closely Kensington Development Partners on an entertainment district. Uh, we hope to roll out a proposal to our village board in July of a large phase one development with a huge entertainment anchor. This will be the first of its kind at West. So I'm excited to uh, uh, hopefully move this forward here. Um, it's tough to move entertainment during the pandemic. And so <laughs> we've been fortunate to have a very patient partner uh, and uh, you know, we've scoured uh, the nation to try and find users that make sense and that would be attractive. And, Keep Schaumburg as a destination to help you know our folks at Woodfield, the hotels, and everybody else. So hopefully more to come in July. Uh, but this is potential build out after four or five years. So we'll see how that goes. Um, going to the west side of Meacham. Uh, so this is the Urban Street Group uh, development they call Viridian. Uh, so you see Polar in the lower left. That's already built. That's that brand new uh, um, building across from Zurich. Uh, we you can see D.R. Horton, the row homes in the far north along Algonquin. But uh, what I'm most excited about is what they call the districts. So this is development on the right side, uh, showcasing kind of the restaurant, retail, and first floor with apartments above it. Uh, they've been fortunate to secure uh, sports and social. Uh, this is a fantastic group. Generally, they only locate in professional sports teams, communities. So if anybody's been to Ballpark Village, 
or uh, up in Baltimore, uh, you've seen uh, their restaurant bar concepts. So they've got the great outdoor patio. They've got lots of entertainment music to watch those professional teams. Uh, this should be a great anchor for that development. So they are hoping to open in 2023. Uh, our team will be reviewing the plans here in the next few months and that will go to our board for approval, hopefully in the fall. So this, the top is just another um, elevation of what that could look like. Uh, the one on the bottom is Priya Living. Uh, this is an interesting one. This is for a 55 over crowd. Um, this is developers out of California. Uh, he's got four communities out there. Uh, Arun Paul calls this the uh, cruise that's in the building. So it's very heavily social uh, engaged, uh, great food, great amenities. So this is 55 and over. Uh, Priya would offer uh, roughly 200 or so apartments here. Uh, and this development is, uh, is being reviewed right now. It's going to the zoning board in uh, the end of the month. And so we're uh, excited about that, uh, bringing in a new uh, residential opportunity to the market. Uh, I want to touch upon workforce, you know, uh, DCO kind of alluded to it, but I want to give you a couple stats, kind of where things stand. Um, you know, pre-pandemic, we were at 2.4% unemployment, which is you know, amazing. Um, but then obviously, you know, the high was 15% April. You look at the total 2020 average for Schaumburg, uh, we were just about 8.3%. Now, obviously, things are coming back as businesses reopen. Uh, the latest number from the Illinois Department of Employment Security is uh, just over 5.5%. So hopefully that trend will continue. We'll be able to get some of these folks back in the workforce programs. You know, Jonathan talked about some of the uh, uh, partnership, apprenticeship programs and so forth. We're obviously trying to connect people it's one of the number one complaints I get when I visit uh, businesses is, hey, I need help with workforce. I can't find anybody. So uh, we're continuing to work on that. One of the ways we're doing that is, uh, especially our restaurants, um, you know, if you've been to a restaurant lately, just be a little patient. Obviously, they're trying their best and they, they may be short staffed and some of those things. Uh, but the village rolled out a $460,000 uh, restaurant grant program. Uh, some of that uh, money can be earmarked to help get these employees back <coughs> on. So uh, we're also paying uh, some rent and some of these other things to make sure that we uh, help those who have been most impacted. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. And I also want to give a quick plug to North, Next Level Northwest. Uh, Comcast, who's our sponsor today, uh, Lavelle Law, who's here, uh, and Wintrust. Uh, this is a business accelerator program uh, geared towards helping our established businesses take it to the next level. So I know Dan is uh, a past participant in that and uh, is, uh, has done well with that. Uh, we're excited to move forward with Extra Mile and Pilot Pete's. Um, so if you know of companies who may benefit, uh, please reach out to myself and uh, we'll work on that. So with that, I think I'll turn time over to Lisa. So Whitfield Mall. <laughs> Whitfield Mall, 1971. Yeah. My question was which company was celebrating their 50th anniversary, and that is Whitfield Mall in September. Any questions from the audience? Thank you. So she, uh, Irene, Jonathan, Matt, thank you so much. Um, any questions from the audience? Any questions from the virtual attendees? All right, we have one question from Tony Lafreniere with the Park District. Matt, that's sports and social. How, how big a square foot are they, when you said partner, are they taking up more than one uh, space? Yeah. Um, they are generally 35,000 square feet. So this is the think punch bowl social two or three times. Yeah, so it, it, it's big. So they, they have a large outdoor plaza where you play bags and outdoor games and that type of stuff. They usually have a two level um, uh, indoor facility. Cool. Thank you, Matt. And uh, thank you all for joining us today. Um, and then thanks to our supporting sponsors, Harper College. Do we have Dr. Michelle Smith? virtually to say a few words. Good morning, everybody. Hi, how's everybody doing? Great. Listen, I wanted to thank you all for such a rich conversation this morning. Um, I wanted to say to Jonathan, he was speaking my language. Harper offers apprenticeships. One of the Illinois Small Business Development Centers comes out of our shop. So we are um, excited to have the opportunity to be here today and hear all the good things you guys are sharing. I also want to say to my good friend, Matt Frank, I've had a chance to work with the village of Schaumburg and Harper is excited because that new Popeyes is right up the street from our campus. <laughs> I'm thrilled about that. <laughs> um, I just wanted to say to everybody, 
Uh, much of what Harper offers really is in line with the things you've heard today. So I wanna encourage you to reach out to me if you have questions or concerns. I am M Smith, S-M-I-T-H, at harpercollege.edu. Or you can simply go to harpercollege.b as in boy, I as in igloo, Z as in zebra, harpercollege.biz. And there are a number of resources there that talk about all the things we offer, such as apprenticeships and coursework and short-term training. We really do wanna provide solutions to help you with your workforce. And much of what we do, we can lock hands and partner with many of the things you heard here today. So thank you again, Lisa, for having us here. And thank you all for the panelists who shared uh, such great information. I think it's an exciting time to be in the workforce arena. And we are all gonna come out of this COVID uh, space stronger than we ever were or could imagine. Thank you. Oh, and we are so happy to have her part of the community. So thank you for being here today. And next we have Top Golf. Mary, why don't you come up and say a few? Well, I'll just stand right here. Hi, everybody. So uh, Top Golf, of course, we're still open, 100% inside, 100% outside. Um, we are right in the hallway today. We've got a few goodies for you. So if you have any questions, just check in with Jacob. And Jacob's over there, Jacob or I, and we'll be happy to answer any questions and give you a little swag if you like. Thanks, Mary. And we've heard from Matt with the Village, so thank you again. Uh, and then I also wanted to acknowledge, I see there are some individuals present who did not take breakfast. Uh, Golden Brunch, thank you for providing breakfast this morning. If you didn't, feel free to grab one on the way out. They're fantastic. And also, I wanted to make sure I acknowledged all the formally elected officials in the room. I did not acknowledge the soon-to-be elected official that will be sworn in on Thursday, I believe, uh, with the Schaumburg Park District. Mr. Bernie Mealy. So if you have not yet met the new Schaumburg Park District Commissioner, please do. Um, and then thank you again so much. Can we go to the next slide? Just a few updates. Next week, we are having a member appreciation week. We have all the goodies set up. There are about 40 different businesses participating, offering discounts. We're doing complimentary headshots, um, complimentary web assessments. Let's go to the next slide. This is all on our website. The Golf Classic coming up on June 21st. Golf Classic and Ladies Golf Outing. Two outings, one day. Amazing networking on the course. If there's, there might be some participation. If you're interested, let me know and we'll see if we can get to in still. Let's go to the next one. This is the slide I wanted everyone to see. Selfie World. Matt Frank indicated if you haven't yet been there, stop by. We're having our local connections. That's a pop-in event on June 22nd. Followed by Women in Business Luncheon followed by Coughing Contacts. That is all the same week as the Golf Classic. So that is a week of the Schomburg Business Association. And then we have our next workforce development series, which is going to be a DISC assessment. So feel free to attend, send individuals from the company as well. And that's that is a new educational series that we're offering monthly. So all the details can be found on our website. So. It's a personality testing. So you can learn yours, you can learn how to read others, and you can help build those connections. And what's gonna be interesting about this one is they are as really directing it specifically to SBA and how to maximize your membership giving your personality and the different the different events we have as well as opportunities within the association. Absolutely, Tom. So thank you all again. Have a wonderful day. And Comcast could not be more appreciative, thought, Sean. Thanks, and Karen and the whole team. Don't be a stranger. See you soon. Bye. Yes.